Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to Nobunaga's Ambition Taishi. This is a sponsored video, so I want to say a massive thank you to the developers for reaching out to the channel. I've never actually played the Nobunaga series whatsoever, so when they offered to do a sponsorship, I actually jumped at the chance because this is a series I've never played, but I've always heard pretty decent things about it. I am also a pretty big fan of Asian style games, which you'll see kind of the Asian, I guess, feel come through quite heavily with this and it's quite an in-depth strategy game as well so it'll be good to go ahead and hopefully explore that so as i said i've played a couple hours already i wanted to get a good feel of the game before diving in and really showing you guys what it's all about because you'll see there's quite a few things which if you don't know what they do you'll, you'll kind of get a little bit lost so what we're going to do is we're going to jump in on the first scenario and we are going to be playing my boy right over here we're going to be playing as the hojo because i remember from shogun 2 with us this was a faction that I, I definitely did kind of click with a lot. So, yeah, we're going to be playing as the Hojo. They also start off pretty powerful. They're the sixth strongest faction at the beginning of the game with bases and officers, which we'll get onto in a little bit. Um, so, I thought this would be a good one. They also start off at war as well, so we'll be able to dive our way straight back into war. But one of the things I guess I didn't even mention is just look at how many characters there are in this uh in this game there's so many different you know clans you can play in japan so it's really cool you can kind of go for someone who's super strong or you can go as like one of the weaker factions and try and expand your borders and try and conquer people and one of the really cool things as well about this game is that each of these factions kind of have their own little story they can follow and there's like a nice little kind of narrative behind the campaigns of what's actually going on in feudal japan which we'll see as well um at the hojo uh, faction is kind of at the center of this kind of scenario that's happening as we are at war with a pretty large coalition of clans to the north and we kind of have to try and unify the Decada and whoa, I can't remember what this faction is down here uh, and try and unify the Imagua. Oh, I can't. I apologize. I really do. I, I do need to get better at my pronunciation. But over to this clan, over to the left. My pronunciation is pretty bad, I'm not going to lie. So let's just jump in and I'll be able to show you guys more about the gameplay itself. So each faction leader does have their kind of own little style of how they will play. They have their own traits. They'll have their own missions and stuff that they really need to try and develop. And once they meet certain conditions, they'll go ahead and kind of acquire bonuses. So on Death's Door, um, so I'm not going to go ahead and read through all of this. You guys can if you want to. Uh, I think I want to kind of just dive more more into the campaign but the underlying kind of thing is that there's a, a dude about to die in my clan and other other factions are trying to seize that to their advantage and push in and trying to take out my lands whilst you know my faction leader is you know passing away and you know the power is a little bit weak so as you can see we do start off at war in the north um but we you know because we're at war it's a good chance for us to expand our lands as well However, they are going to be a coalition forming against me straight away. So we'll see these selection of factions all rising up uh, to support them in the events of war. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this map. I actually, um, yeah, I don't actually need a lot of this. I guess we can run through the tutorial if it will pop up. I don't really need the basics because I, I have a good understanding of everything. But I guess it will be good to show you guys more about the game. So we have our income and harvest. This is, I believe... Every, yeah, this is every single month how much we're getting through uh, our, our, our harvest and our money. And this will translate into provisions which we'll need to pay our armies. Officers is how many kind of divisions of units we'll have. And again, you'll see a lot more of that in a little bit because it is heavily dependent on actually having these characters leading in groups of soldiers, which is something I really do like. And I guess it's something we'll be seeing in Total War at some point. With the new 3K, they showed that now, like, you know, characters are much more tied to their divisions and commanders on the battlefield, which is really, really cool. Those are going to be the basic ones. We'll go ahead and now take a look at trade, because trade is actually quite a big um, option in this game. And trying to dominate the trade game, you know, you can, you can kind of expand as a pretty small empire through trade and stuff, which is really cool. There's an entire, like, kind of development right there. 
So let's go ahead and I think we're doing trade first. So this is the trade map right here. Um, at the moment, we have, I believe, one action every single turn to go ahead and invest in a trade node to improve our power there or try and conquer another one and start putting our merchants into that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pick one of these down here and we're simply going to expand into it. Because we have one touching, we can do that. And this will basically send your know, merchants over there. We'll start trading in the region and that will help provide us more gold that we can then spend on improving our empire so it's going to be the whole of commerce uh, agriculture i don't really need to because i kind of i already know that resolve and basic controls i think we're good with that um yeah and we, we can kind of just skip that and move forward whenever we need to so we are at war and if we take a look at the diplomacy map mode which is this one um or well, the war map mode you can see that i'm currently all the way down here and i'm at war with this faction um, however, these other factions that have joined them are quite likely to send reinforcements to help them out. So we'll have to be careful, as you can see, they've got plenty of alliances which can all send soldiers to the main army of our opponent, uh, which hopefully they won't do because it will kind of be a bit more difficult if they do. So, you know, before we do kind of consolidate our forces and prepare for war, I do want to take a look at our agriculture. You know, making sure we tend to our crops is super important because the more supplies you have and the more provisions you have right here to supply your armies, the better they will fight. And if this number runs out, you will start losing your soldiers almost immediately. People will just start leaving your armies. And, you know, if you run out of provisions in the in the middle of winter where you don't produce any, you know, like any harvest whatsoever, you're going to be really, really stuck. And I love this mechanic, how you have to prepare for the winter. You know, your crops aren't going to be growing, so you need to make sure that you have enough left over. And you can do that, and, you know, each month you can kind of decide what do you want to do. Do you want to try and improve the fertility of a certain region? Do you want to sell it and try and do something else? Um, and these do carry over every single time as well. So it's kind of uh, pretty um, pretty nice to kind of try and balance that. So I think what we will do is we'll just try and build up as many provisions as we can. So this, you know, to sow the fields does give us more food. So we'll go ahead and stick off on that straight away. Um, now we've already done this one. Yes, yeah, so now we just have to till it all the rest, right? Yeah, I think we want to till all the rest because they do give us less refugees, but give us more farmers and this will be tied a little bit later to something else as well, which we'll see. So let's go back on there and we'll just click till all. Um, yeah, till all. Oh, do I have to select them? Yeah, just just do them all. Select all right there. Perfect. So that should all you know improve the amount of food I've got coming in. Um, however, it will reduce my goal because I won't be like selling as much. But I think just boosting up our provision straight away, especially because we're at war, is really, really important. I love the way that you can zoom all the way into the map and you kind of follow the roads into cities. And as they start, to, the cities start to expand, you can see them grow and grow and grow, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, especially as you can kind of see the smaller barricades of this fortress. And it will grow and grow as the cities get bigger and bigger. I really like that style. Um, I, I think it is pretty cool. We also have some quests to do as well. Raise the Takeda clan's opinion of us to 60. So that's kind of like our first little objective as Mr. Hojo. And we also can defend the castle, uh, Kagawo Castle, which I believe is right here. So I think what I want to do here is, yeah, we'll have to move our general over there at some point and appoint him there. That's definitely a good idea. So that's agriculture we just looked at. Next is development. Here we can go ahead and develop, cultivate the land and improve our provinces, making them more kind of fish focused or making them into trading towns or uh, doing this, which reduces floods and stuff. I'm going to build a reservoir. Uh, probably just, can we build a reservoir down here? No, you can only build them on the uh, lands which are growing. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a couple trading towns to begin and now when you decide to uh, send in people to build stuff you actually have to send a character so that's why it's good to kind of have a whole range of characters in your empire and i kind of really like this feel of it that you're sending certain people to do certain stuff not just kind of a mindless set to build i wouldn't mind it actually being quite tied to the um tied to the provinces I, I like i'd love the total war province system to be in here and kind of just assigning them to deal with it and you can even see it being built on the map right there which is really really cool uh so yeah we'll, we'll build a couple more buildings i think nothing too crazy because we are at war after all um so we'll probably just upgrade uh maybe another fishing town along here she where's our last trading one so we have a trading over there and down here as well because we obviously have all of this territory as well so we'll probably build like a trading town right here because this is right next to our province 
Uh, let's just select someone down here. He has pretty good stats. It's, it's a little bit annoying because I don't know exactly what all the ones are. So, for example, oh my god, this entire place can be fishing. I guess we'll do something like that. So, I don't know. I assume the top one is leadership, then value, intelligence, politics, and then I don't know what the, I think, force is maybe the military strength. And as you can see, our main leader is really, really strong. And I assume the higher politics they have, the quicker they do it. So, you want to pick someone with a decent amount of politics. Um, so, I, I guess understand. we'll just choose him. So that's enough now. I don't want to kind of over expand all of my, my empire by building so much stuff. Obviously, we are still at war. So now to go ahead and muster our soldiers, we want to go ahead and deploy right here. Uh, we don't need to do anything like that. So what we want to do is we want to select this and then we want to click form unit. This is going to go ahead and muster our entire army for the war. So it's whether we want to spread it out, we want to keep it together. We can go ahead and add in other commanders as well. And um, you can see their leader right here, uh, where we want them and stuff. So he has 13,000 so soldiers, so we'll probably select him. And uh, probably select another unit as well, another 30. Probably take a smaller force down here. Take them a little bit longer to get here, 33 days. Um, and then we'll leave a small defense back there yeah, as well. So here we go. We can also decide what we want to form the army up of. Do we want mainly horses as much as we can? Um, or do we want a certain amount of guns? Or do we want you know a certain amount of infantry? You can also see up here how this will affect our um, provisions. We'll start losing provisions once this army is set up. You also see all the different commanders in each of these units, which will join along the battle fight and all of their abilities. So it's just it's a lot of detail in the game, and it's something I actually personally really do like. Um, you know, so we'll form this up. So this is actually going to give us a lot of units. Do we want this many soldiers, or do we want to split the army up? I think we'll be able to split the army up at some point, um, and we will just go normal, right? Because that will give us, um, instead of forcing people to be infantry, we'll have more horses. Uh, I, think, I think, yeah, I think it swaps a few more of the um, units around, and that'll be enough. So we should form up here with a pretty big army, almost 6,000 soldiers. Um, so let's tell them to start marching here. Everyone, follow me! So our armies are going to make their way over. You can see all the characters now all of a sudden start to appear, um, and they're going to be gathering over here. So our entire army will be rising up. You can see the flags. I don't think you can see them if you zoom all the way in. Again, I really like this aesthetic feel to it. And this is something I really would love, love, love to have um, Paradox games be like. Being able to zoom all the way in and just even watch battles would be really exciting. Um, even though you actually do get to fight these battles and you'll see the battle system is actually kind of cool for a game like this. And as I said, I kind of wish that other titles would do that. So as you can see, we're currently at war with a lot of the enemy. They do outnumber us by 15,000 soldiers, so that would suggest that we do uh, or should go and recruit some more soldiers. So let's do that. Let's go to our capital. And here is a pan plant panel where you decide uh, what you want to recruit. Obviously, recruiting more soldiers will cost you gold. However, if you recruit more militia, you're actually going to go ahead and lose more provisions. The more militia you recruit, the less uh, farmland can be harvested and the slower it is. So you actually end up losing more food. So you kind of have to try and balance that as much as you can. Um, it also lowers your productivity. Uh, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to go ahead and pick myself up a couple extra hundred soldiers. And then you go ahead and change refugees and infantry. Uh, refugees to infantry, sorry. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and muster, I don't know, maybe a couple extra 600 heavy infantry or normal infantry, which is really, really nice. So, oh my god, yeah, so that's, that, that's not 3,200 in total, it's just some of the Lord's armies moving as well. And what they should do is they should make their way over to reinforce once they're done. I'm also going to go ahead and muster a couple more units over on this side as well. So let's go ahead and, um, yeah, let's go ahead and recruit just a couple more, maybe like another 1,000 soldiers. Um, like something like that. Again, it's going to be reducing my, my harvest and stuff, but overall that should give me enough uh, men in total. And you can see all of these guys right here, they're all officers. Uh, so the more officers you have, the more diverse and bigger armies you get. And each of these are their own characters, and I really, really like that. Let's go to diplomacy now. Uh, we don't need to do that. So our first initial mission was to go ahead and boost our relationship with Takeda. So we can go ahead and just ask him for trade. Unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. We need a little bit more. So what we can now do, if we go to this panel, is send a goodwill mission. Basically, this will send one of my characters over here. Or can I not do that? I don't think I can. Oh, do I, oh here we go. So by sending this guy, he will start pursuing for a certain 
mechanic. Something I really wish um, would be more obvious is I don't know if I can do this without taking away the character from my armies. So, you know, like, do I want to keep these soldiers? Like, do I want to pick someone who, I mean, this guy's actually pretty good, 74 politics. Um, um, yeah, like, so does this take, if this guy was commanding an army, now would he be away from it? Like, I just don't know. So I wish that was maybe a little bit more clear. Um, but anyway, here we go. So this will cost me a, a 300 gold a month, um, which is fine. It'll take me three months to go ahead and secure ourselves a trade agreement with them. Um, seven months for an alliance, 80 for a marriage. And sometimes this stuff can go bad as well. For example, you know, he can get poor events where Understood. it doesn't happen. So I'm just going to send him off and he's going to go for a goodwill mission over there. Try and secure our self-trade. Uh, reinforcements, you can also ask your allies for men to come over. We don't actually have any allies right now, but I'm sure that's what the Usagi will be doing up to the north. Um, so we've done everything kind of mainly important. Posting, I don't think I need to assign any more commanders. We could buy more provisions if we want to, but I don't think we do. Um, I think we're good at everything here. We've got all our labors going as well. So hopefully it'll be a good far harvest and we'll be able to make plenty of provisions. We also spent quite a lot of our money. Um, finally, as well, before I end the turn and kind of it plays out a bit, uh, our cash up is up here. Um, no, sorry, our war exhaustion is up here. When you have more of this blue bar than your opponents, it's kind of like their will to fight. So if you want to crush them, um, the lower this is, the better your forces do. So let's go ahead and end our turn. So this will move it now to the action phase where all the units will start to move. You can see all of my men moving around the battlefield. You'll be able to see the enemies as well. You can also pause it and re you know, maneuver these soldiers at any point you want. I think when they're stationary you can then reorder them and move them around the battlefield to kind of counter your opponent but i'm going to continue just gathering my force up here and you can see we, we are actually losing provisions slowly but surely we do gain them overall um but obviously this being a, a messenger has um, early march we don't really get as many provisions as possible you know um, which would also be kind of nice if it told me monthly where i lose this um, so the Takeda have made a request for negotiation. Let's see what the Takeda want. You know, our mission is to be friends of them. They want to go ahead and offer us a trade agreement. Yeah, sure. This will obviously help our economy quite nicely. And so also the enemy have waited to the end of their turn to uh, muster their forces. We're going to get some reinforcements making their way in. Um, oh, this is really good. The Imagawa want to have a marriage. Definitely. Let's go ahead and improve. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe we're just kind of declaring ourselves friends. Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, so, yeah. So, dispatches is something you get at the end of every single month, uh, which goes ahead and tells you basically what happened. You can go ahead and really go in depth, see what happened, uh, see who fought to, um, and kind of really just develop that, which I, 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 think I really, really like. You can see that we are actually starting to lose provisions due to the fact that it's kind of early in the year, so we're not producing as much quite yet. Uh, we, we did lose quite a big bit of gold, but we also went ahead and built quite a few trade villages and stuff, so it's completely fine. The next little section of the game is council, and I I'd really like, like this because this stops. leads on to something else which just oh, just gets me all warm inside. Uh, but, so basically, the council will offer you six different options, and you can either get abilities that improve your food, or get certain kind of policy points, which you'll see you'll be able to spell them. So for example, this guy will offer me eight, uh, eight commerce, I believe, so that's kind of like trading resource as well as giving me certain bonuses like investing cut down means it's cheaper to invest in trade nodes and also will uh, the spy network will also be helping for as well or you can go with guys like this who basically just give you a ton of these political points so it's a really nice little move uh, around oh unit speed lightning speed that's actually really good and we've got to remember as well we are at war right now so picking up um that's really nice as well. Provision consumption down. I think Shall definitely this guy. He gives me some agricultural political points, but also gives me uh, unit morale up. I really want to reduce the amount of supplies I take because this could be a long war. And then I might just take a dude who gives me... A, I mean, these guys are all giving me a ton of stuff. And he just gives me a bit of everything. And also means our goodwill missions to the Decada lands will be better. Yeah, let's do that. So we could have maybe picked up a few more political points, which will allow us to do what you guys uh, will see right now. 
So he's going to suggest to me about this. So this is all your po policies. And oh my god, I like I personally love a good um, a good spider web tech tree or policy laws or whatever. Like it just it just just makes me all happy inside when I see something. And this will expand the further I get along. Loads more stuff stuff will pop up. I mean, you can see how big it will eventually expand to. It's actually really really crazy. Um, but you can basically just, you know, do this and right up here, something has spawned. One of my advisors told me about this and, you know, I can go ahead and do this. So this, you know, helps me boost my TZ is trade zone. So the trade zone growth will be increased. However, I only have one mine at the moment and I don't want to spend my political points. As you can see, it will cost me 15 commerce points, which you can see up here how many I have to go ahead and grab that. And I honestly just don't think it's worth it right now. I'm going to save my points up to pick up some other stuff. I'm going to get this though. This will cost me 15 of my uh, rhetoric uh, and will give me some nice bonuses. And you know, I'll be able to obviously try and pick up more. We definitely need to try and grab the Provision Supply Squad 1. So we need 16 military. So next time we have a council, which I believe is in three months time, we'll have to try and grab that. Um, yeah, I don't want to do all the other policies. I'm happy with what I've done. So we've almost gathered our entire forces. They're gonna they're gathering their army as well. In total, they're gonna have they're gonna outnumber us a little bit, actually. Yeah, they are going to outnumber us. And we, we have now got some more men here. Do we have another commander here? Can we deploy the rest of these men all the way up here? I don't think so. Yeah, how do I I think I just click deploy right and then send it to the commander? Or do I have to then regather up this army and and see. Do I have to then reformat this army? No, because that's something completely different. I want to, yeah, you're already gathering. And it doesn't look like I can add. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can add any more. So I guess that will have to be my secondary army, which I do decide to move up. But I, what I could do is I could, for example, can I select this guy or not? I'd have to get rid of that, right? Select this guy, and I could form him up and add him because um, this is, these guys are already in an army. I think the majority of them are, right? Yeah. Like this would be nicer if it told me kind of what was in the army and what wasn't, but whatever. We'll just we'll just build up our big army. Well, I'm sure we'll have enough, especially with me commanding it. I think they kind of go quite easy on you in the first battle. So I'm gonna let my gold build up. Agriculture, I can't really do much right now. Goodwill missions are we're slowly boosting up our relation. Um, hmm, I might go up to try and get an alliance with them because that's what we kind of need to do. So we'll send another our goodwill mission over there. We're building all of this stuff. So we need to make sure we remember we have a node to invest in or try and take. Again, we'll probably try and expand into this node Let's right here. Uh, just try and secure our entire continent. And I think we'll be good to end the term, right? Because you're making your way over here. Yeah, let's go. So we're going to form up with our 6,000 soldiers. They're going to form up with their 6,700. Damn, that's actually quite a lot of soldiers. But I think we can do it. And you can see all your events down here. And if you do see something, you can do that. So what we could decide to do right now in mid-action phase is we could send our soldiers out. We could disband it. We could enter our forces. We could look at our army composition. Um, and basically, decide. so if let's we wanted to engage steps. them, we could. We could push on them. I think I'm just going to sit here, though, inside the castle and see if they want to attack me. After all, they do have superior men. Oh, they, they ran out of supplies. Oh, that's huge. They actually just ran out of supplies and, and or they disbanded their army. I'm not sure. I think they just sent their soldiers back as a defensive man, like a defensive measure. They brought it up like as in we're going to attack you and then decided not to, um, to kind of... I think that was more of a defensive force, as if we pushed on them, they would have attacked us, and if we just sat here, they'll disband, and they'll just raise these soldiers up next turn. However, it gives me a great opportunity to push on them, which I might do. I'm also tempted to move over here, but I feel like securing Osha will be too really nice. It'd also be really cool if there was uh, more like battle camps on the map, right? Once you have taken this over. You actually get to actually have to do stuff. I mean, look how good our leader is as well. He is absolutely amazing. He is a soldier and a half. Yeah, 13 officers right now. So we have 2,100 men here. And we also have quite a few soldiers over here. I might try and uh, form up a new army around here. I 
God, it's really annoying because I assume some of these are in our northern army, right? They must be. They all take 17 days, so I think they're all literally over here. Well, I'm going to march you out anyway. Forward. And I'm going to march you out. I know you're already up there, aren't you? But this is another 1,700 men. Yeah, bringing these guys up will be great. I am obviously leaving the cities undefended, which could be a little bit risky. Our income's jumped up a little bit, so let's build a few more uh, kind of farms around. Or we can continue improving, yeah. So let's improve the schedule. So I think that basically just, you know, makes it complete a lot quicker. Um, I'm actually okay with just letting them do. That's fine. Let's go ahead and build a ranch somewhere. Could be kind of cool to improve our, our dudes. Uh, let's definitely build a, dr a drill camp. Because units next to this castle will just be a lot better. So we'll, we'll push that by our, by our main province. I guess I'll just send you it. there. Um, yeah, it's like I don't really know what's better to have. So we can also improve our castle as well. Should we just go really heavy on like raising some good good generals and stuff? But T Town is also pretty actually awesome because it goes ahead and so yeah, does that mean he's educated? I guess he's the best of a job. Um, that will obviously help the population of the city. So the bigger population, the better it will be. And we'll build that. Doesn't mean our money does go down, but we're making some good cash, so that's fine. So I'm going to wait until these these soldiers do make their way all the way up north, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to select him. Um, we're going to, yeah, we're going to send him off. And as soon as he gets there, we're going to send him back up north. And then probably make our march on Osha. They're replenishing their soldiers. So let's go ahead and pause it really quickly. It's we're going to march him up there. Follow me. We can just triple speed it as well. They're going to muster their soldiers. Doesn't look like they're going to. Okay, good. So we're going to obviously be losing a lot of supplies because of this. But we are now in summer, so hopefully we can amass a few Allow provisions. Um, can we see agriculture if anything crazy happens there? After tilling the land, if the fertile has been increased, it's good. Lots of fertility up. No development. Um, our, deploy, our goodwill has improved. So we're next turn, we should hopefully be pretty friendly with them. Military wise, I've made it to it. Yeah, so they've all kind of formed up that castle. Results. Yeah, we're losing provisions fast. That's not good. It's because we've got so many soldiers levied, but we're going to need to move out. Okay, so let's march let's our go. main army over here. Yeah, let's go ahead and start march. team marching. I want to besiege them. Now, here's the question Do we try and keep both of these armies together, or do I decide to send one over here and just try and take them out? We saw that it could raise about. About 6,000 soldiers. I'm going to risk it and send this army over here. We march. And basically just try and secure this area as quickly as possible. Um, I also need to try my best. I believe we can go obviously also invest in the node as well. So what do we want to do? I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to invest in this one. A bit more. Try and improve our, our power. This is kind of our central node after all. So let's do that. I don't think we need to do any more development in our empire. Could definitely recruit some more soldiers. But I'm not going to. I don't think so. We could also appoint another officer here, actually. This is a good point. Oh, we don't actually have anyone. If we had another character, we could appoint another commander here. And he could take the 2,700 soldiers up here and meet up with everyone else. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to go to battle. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to show you guys what battle was all about. Let's go up to normal speed. Send out our army. I assume they're going to muster their soldiers immediately. Cut off all so we're going to surround the city itself. Start, you know, breaking down its morale. I'm surprised they haven't sent any other soldiers to intervene with us yet. I'm, I mean, I'm sure they're going to. They might just need a little bit of time to, to form up. Because if they don't send anyone out, this is good. But it does, did look like they kind of ran out of supplies. They must be spending a lot of their money on other stuff. Um, which is good. Continue goodwill has improved our relationship. Is it up to 60 yet? Oh, so close. Next turn, we'll go ahead and secure that. These are last month's results. Okay, and we're losing provisions so quickly. I might try and see if we can I'd get like that provision consumption down as soon as we can. Oh, so why is he glowing? Is this like an epic one? Oh, yeah, this is amazing. Ge unit morale is up and also general morale is up. And we get 18 swords. Definitely, you are being signed into law, my friend. Um, so, unit speed and mine growth. We only have one mine, so it's not really worth it. Wow, we're getting some really good dudes. 
When I played this last time, I did not get as many good dudes as this. Uh, raise home unit. Oh, that's really good as well. Agricultural cost down. That's pretty good as well. Investment. I think I'm going to get this guy and get this guy. Because this gives us a lot of military and also gives us some agriculture to spend. That, let us end this council. So we should now be able to pick up this, which will reduce our supply consumption, hopefully by a lot. Because it doesn't tell me how much, but I'm hoping it's going to be a decent amount. And then we'll probably try and pick up this one as well. Even though it costs us a lot, I think it might just be worth it. And we'll also improve our farm. Well, yeah, we'll expand the farms as much as possible. Because that will then give us, you know, more provisions to begin with. We have a lot of ports. So that's something good to note how many we have. Seeds, fertilizer, yeah. So we need to try and improve that. We actually have 10 veteran officers as well. And five kin officers, which I believe are, um, I believe they're officers which just have not come of age yet. So, I mean, food-wise, how are we looking? We do need to try and invest it as much as possible. We still haven't spent our action yet. I guess investing in this or expanding into this is a must. Linking up all my nodes will probably be good. I'm a little bit, um, a little bit nervous, actually, about our supplies running kind of low. I mean, we're in July now, so we should be harvesting them pretty soon. Can I have anything? Which I mean, fishing towns, right, would be really useful. So let's just let's just build like a coastline of fishing towns, like here. Ha. Something like that. And ah. we'll do the same there. So we'll build a coast of fishing towns because these do provide me with more provisions per month, uh, which, which is really great. So that should hopefully allow me to get all of these dudes. And quick question. I wonder if I can build, like, multiple stuff on one thing. It doesn't look like I can, right? Once you build one thing there, is it, is it done that forever? Even though these can kind of be built on top of stuff. But maybe once I've finished building them, because I know these guys, these buildings... Oh, we don't. We want to select that first. Build these fisheries. I know once... They're, cause they're, they're still actually technically building a lot of these huh. stuff, so... Okay, we'll spend a little bit of gold to finish that up. Because I want to improve the population. But yeah, provisions. Hmm, maybe I don't need these soldiers then. Maybe I don't need all of these men. And we can actually de-recruit a bunch. Just go down a little bit. But I don't know if this will reduce the amount of men I have or what. Because this will obviously help my... I might just do that and improve the infantry a little bit. So could we have 2,000 men here just waiting? So we might as well reduce it a little bit. I, I, I must have the forces way too early. Okay, let's just continue the siege then. So I could storm a castle, which would bring me into a battle. Don't think we really need to, but we might. Maybe just lower the morale a little bit. I'm surprised they haven't mustered their soldiers. I mean, preemptively hitting them is, is really good. Nice. Well, I mean, I'm going to be up on them all they want. The diplomatic talks worked out well. The Takeda's opinion of us has reached a desired level. Let us waste no time in negotiating. Cool. And again, this kind of furthers the story nicely. So you actually get to kind of see more about what's going on in feudal Japan. Right now you have me, the people to my left who I uh, befriended, and also uh, the Takeda kind of all talking about how we should form an ultimate alliance to unite and kind of expand our borders. We'll all back each other up. And they all kind of talk. One of the things I did have trouble with, because I'm not so akin to the Japanese history, especially around feudal times, there's so many clans, and sometimes I just don't know what clan I'm talking about in a certain situation. So having maybe a flag somewhere, or the icon, or just even showing me the map, would be really, really useful, I think. So yeah, basically just a bunch of story, which you can read, you know, obviously, Allow if you pick the report. game up. Uh, but we're just going to skip These for the purpose of this video. Results. Again, yeah, we are losing supplies super fast. Is there any way? I mean, it's just because I've got my men levied. I've got a lot of soldiers as well. So, we managed to raise our opinion. That's pretty cool. So, now uh, we have to try and defend the castle. But we don't... I mean, we don't need to. We're on the aggression. Mm, I might... God damn. Yeah, I don't know what would be best to improve because we can't do agriculture in this month um i guess keep on investing hopefully our farms will build soon which will be really nice i guess we'll invest in this as well Understood. and we might have to actually buy some provisions so i believe if we go to this 
And then this, we can actually buy ourselves some. So for 2,400 gold, we can pick ourselves up. Only 800 provisions? Wow, we just don't have enough gold right now. Hmm. I guess we're going to, even though we're just going to kill our gold. I'm going to buy a couple just preemptively because I know for a fact we're going to run out fairly soon. So we need to try and we need to kind of have a big battle and dominate them. We're going to end the turn again. Oh yeah, also I'll show you guys as well if we go to the, before we do actually fully go into the action phase. Uh, we go to diplomacy now. As you can see, we do actually have, I believe, an alliance, if I'm not mistaken, with the Takeda and also the Imagawa, uh, which is really nice. That's going to just give us so much more dominance on the battlefield whenever we fight. So yeah, we are just sieging them out, which I'm, I'm kind of okay with. We, we just took the castle like that. Don't worry, guys. We will 100% get into the battles because I really do want to show off how the battles work. Because I think they're really, really cool. Um, that will obviously boost up our war score as well against them. So we're, aggression is kind of high, but, you know, with normal levels at the moment. But taking the castle is pretty big. Um, so do what you want to do. If you want to rest or do we want to push them again? Because yeah, it doesn't look like they're sending any units at us. Let's take steps. I guess we could just start marching some more and just, you know, attack more of their places. Yeah. Okay, let's go. We have we a lot of soldiers. Um, and yeah, we'll just go and hit them. Oh, but okay, they've, they've mustered soldiers now. Yeah, literally that instant. But we'll go and hit them. If we can hit them before they form up properly, that'll be huge. So the army's going out. I don't think we're going to reach it in time. No. We got kind of, I really like as well how the army uh, is up there. Oh, nice. Uh, this dude has leveled up. Um, that's perfect. And what we're going to go into now, autumn. Allow me to report. Cool. How's our provisions doing? That's what I want to know. These are last month's results. So we did, we did just gain a, a ton of provisions, but is this going to be enough to last us? Oh yeah. Please command me. I think we might need to like it's not going to be great. Because, yeah, we've got 20,000 provisions. Because every year you gain a set amount and you have to make them last throughout the year. And obviously in winter and stuff, you lose a lot more. Um, yeah, we don't need to do that. So we, what we can do, basically, if we want to develop trade nodes, we can go ahead and spend some of our, or our kind of action and gold to basically just improve a trade node to make it more effective. Um, which I believe is just by investing in it, right? And that will help us out. We can also monopolize it, which will basically just give us all the trade power. Uh, but it will give us less money at the beginning. Um, I think I want to keep on expand. Do I want to keep expanding this? Probably not. I think I want. I think I want to invest in something. We're making a lot of money down here. Let's go ahead and Understood. invest in this node. Give us more trade power down here in the south. Something I really do like about the game as well is it offers you a, a really nice kind of differentiation every single season. It really does make Japan feel very different. And I just, yeah, I, I like, I'm honestly having a lot of fun playing this game. I know it's a sponsored video, but, like, if I didn't enjoy it, I would just say it, you know? And from a lot of the reviews I've looked at as well, people say that the other games, which uh, are, are, like, older now, had a lot, like, had a lot of depth to them. So, you know, if you guys have any suggestions on, of, like, any games in this series I should definitely play, do let me know in the comments, because I'm pretty tempted. I'm going to save my money up a little bit now because we're making a decent amount um, and I want to kind of just have a little stockpile there just in case we run into any issues. You can see the land is starting to get cultivated as we're building more trading ports around and fishing ports around the map. Uh, but I think we do just end the turn again. Maybe we want to develop some stuff. I know I said I just didn't want to a second ago. Um, but yeah, I might just... Yeah, I think we're just going to... I think we're going to maybe build, um, like, maybe a, a couple more fishing towns down here. The enemy did also seem to build, where is it, a ninja camp somewhere? What's the ninja village do? Oh, so if we have this, we actually lose provision. We actually, um, so we'll probably build one up here, actually. Understood. Because like that. that goes ahead and reduces the amount of provisions we take. That's not bad. You can go ahead and raise more soldiers. So a lot of this stuff is really good. You can also build more castles as well if I wanted to. Obviously, they're quite expensive to build fortresses. Um, but you can do so. And I guess I assume they'll hold the city a lot more. One of these could be really good as well. Like a post town. 
Um, just to go ahead and help build it out. I think I want to try and build as many trading towns as possible, though. With a few options. So, I'll build another trading town out here. Okay, I, I, the thing is, I just don't know who, who's good to send and stuff. Um, which was kind of a shame. Oh, wait. They're moving out here to attack this army. There's 3,000 of them. So, I guess we're going to have to march away, right? With this Let army. Yeah. Give up the siege there. And we'll, we'll maneuver around. That's kind of a cool thing. So, they, as soon as we decided to move around, they decided to engage my army here. But we should outnumber them quite heavily, so let's do that, and we'll jump into a battle. So they're going to move into the castle as best they can. Um, Surround them. Yeah, so we're now moving in here. Once we're here, I would I would love let's to go. just push on the army and just attack them. We march. Try and crush their army now. Also, whilst we're doing that, we're going to send you let back to the city. So it's kind of like a feint that we kind of pretended to run away, um, and you'll Follow make your me. way back now. Yep, yep, yeah, that seems good. And we should be engaging this army. We are number them by a couple thousand soldiers. Obviously, crossing their hilly areas isn't going to be great. Um, using this army right before us, victory in this battle will fall upon both sides. Leadership you take in this... Co so, we have the option, basically... Yeah, so basically, you have the option to pick a battle if you ever want to fight it or just kind of auto-resolve it. And right here, it's telling me that the battle could go either way. So it's kind of suggesting that I should fight it. Um, so yeah, we will take command of the battle and we will ride in with victory and honor. So this is a very important battle and you know, this is kind of to depend on the war right now. You can see the enemy have formed up over there. They actually have a bigger power bar right now. Um, so there's, the battle's kind of in their favor, maybe because of their their um formation so beginning of the battle we do want we do get the options to kind of decide our strategy see who's commanding what kind of who has what uh like what men and stuff you can also see what plans if you have really good commanders you can see what plans the enemies are having and this is actually really interesting because you, you can change your position and you can basically come up with some us. interesting abilities like this select one unit that will charge into the enemy's main unit when it's found so you know this unit will basically just advance on the enemy position immediately leave it to us we can have, have a prepare an ambush so we'll send some units kind of in in a hidden position on the battlefield we can leave a lore out right now which is what i'm gonna do uh, so basically this unit will bait the enemy to come for him um, and it'll fire off in a couple turns and then once it's fired off the enemy will kind of send a few units to come kill this one and then i'll kind of move in my forces so i'm going to change mine up to lore uh, you can see I have some pretty heavy units as well. Our general unit of our, our, of our what is he called, like a daimyo? Probably, yeah, da daimyo uh, has 800 men in it. So he's very, very much ready for battle. So let's start off. Let's jump into the battle and start moving our men up. So he's going to be luring. I believe the lure is going to fire off in how many turns? Your does it command. say? I think, I think it does say. Oh, yeah, it says at the top. So that'll fire off in three turns. So I kind of want to stick this guy wherever i want their units to be concentrated and i think i'm going to send this over to the left hand side oh like so because they have a lot of soldiers up here and i think i want to try and crush this right flank especially because this motherfucker right here has 1300 men in his unit that's crazy so we're going to send him out to the side Let's begin. please command me and just kind of advance Let's everyone else begin. into position we have our own daimyo right here no this isn't our daimyo no he is 800 member as well wow prepare yourselves so our daimyo is back steps. here you can kind of just sit back behind Let's these begin. guys and then we're going to send these guys up Let's across begin. the river and they're going to this is going to be my army to try and hold prepare this yourselves. you can also see what units what so you can see i have a lot of spearmen and only one unit Please of cavalry but we're going to send this unit of cavalry off Let's to this begin. flank to try and hold back their forces they also get these supply camps as well these supply camps will offer them Everyone some positions So you can see our army is going to be moving around the battlefield. And it's kind of a nice little touch here. The fact that you can actually kind of see your units marching and stuff. Like it, it kind of adds a nice little flavor to the battlefield. Um, and I believe other games have kind of a very similar thing as well. So we can see according to our scouts we found out the enemy's location. Please make sure uh, we inform that in our plan. I'm more than happy to carry on going around this flank. You can see a lot of my men are in marching formation as they are crossing the river. Um, so every so often you will have these commanders who can do certain stuff. Uh, so we can use this gallop ability. This will improve our speed, I believe. So basically it'll just make them a lot faster and they'll basically just push up here to basically just scout out this entire force coming our way, which is really good. Again, I think, I think my plan to hold this river line from all of their men coming across is a good idea. Please command me. 
And I do want to form up. So you also have to kind of try and time your attack with your soldiers. Let's begin. I actually want to move you over. Because as you can see, my soldiers right now prepared. are still in marching column. So if they were to get caught out right now, they would prepare not be in yourselves. you know in a decent formation Let's to fight. So you want to give them time to actually form up as well. Prepare yourselves. Can't believe it's 1,200 men. Like this, this section of men is just crazy big. And you're moving across there. So as everyone moving, you're still my decoy. Right. I want you Let's guys here just to, to charge them. We have to wait another three turns for it to happen. So you can see our, our cavalry is coming out, basically just to scout all of this, see what's over here. Is he going to charge in? I'm not sure if that gallop ability does mean he does charge in. I think it does. Because if he does just charge in, that's pretty crazy. Hopefully we can just retreat him now. I think I do want to just retreat him back. I don't want to overextend. So our law should uh, jump in this time. You're about to form up perfectly. I mean, I do want to try and crush their forces before any more reinforcements do come up. Please command me. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to uh, call the advance a little Let's bit. Begin. Which means I kind of maybe want my cavalry Let's to begin. actually charge in. There's 700 of him. Oh, he's going to come into the flank of him and more reinforcements will turn up. So flanking is a big Please issue in this game. You have to pay very much. You have to pay Let's a lot of begin. attention to the, um, to the flanking. Because you can destroy Let's people's begin. morales. Again, I guess you can go into here Prepare now. Yourselves. You're still making your way across. Let's begin. I guess I'm going to stick you more out here. So you Prepare can go and support yourselves. this. And I guess I'll send you more like here. Let's begin. That way we'll have a much better setup. Perfect. Um, and we'll see in a second when the armies do start to collide. Um, a lot more of like abilities being popped off for certain units. So the Lord Provoke. That should obviously pr produce all these guys just to come flying in now. I think these guys have to push in here. So the plan is kind of almost fired a little bit. And we'll now get extra defense on this unit. They also have their outposts being activated. And I believe the outposts do give an increased defense if the unit is fighting within it. So we're just kind of discovering a lot more of the units. Um, again, what we can do right here is we can disenhearten the enemy. Because this commander has a certain ability which he can now use at this certain time. This, By doing this, he will go ahead and reduce the enemy's morale um, and also their fighting ability. But I think it also goes ahead and hurts our fighting ability a little you bit command. as well. You must be prepared. You must be prepared. So I think these units are going to charge in now. Yeah, so both these units are going to come flying in. I think we're going to crush this guy on the left flank. He's not going to stand a chance. Command. You make your way up there. Can we reinforce here? Let's begin. Yeah, we can. Command. And I want you to go in there. And you basically Please just to kind of form up like Prepare so. Because you're getting attacked in the side. Can I change your focus? No, you're gonna you're just gonna basically be fighting now, which is fine. We can do that. Oh, so it basically just provokes them every three turns. That's kind of cool. So if a battle does pursue, you know, this unit will be taking a lot of pounding, but they're getting reinforcements, so. So we should be pushing in a lot of soldiers. You can see the morale bar in white. The main force is moving in. This left flank though is what I'm looking forward to. He has so many men. I'm hoping he can just destroy them. So our kind of crappier units are starting to come back. And his more professional units are moving his way over. But we can now do a lot of our orders. So we can disenhearten the enemy units. Especially having our general where you can see his morale going down pretty heavily. Uh, we have quite a few other units as well. So he has like a charge ability. Once he's in range, he can move in. So actually learning, learning your commander's abilities is really important. And we're also going to be in flanking this unit as well. So we have two decisions. Do you want to cavalry charge or do we want to try and break them? So this will affect their speed and also their fighting power. Whereas this will just basically boost all of our stats. I think because they have more individual units, I would actually kind of like to, to disenhearten them. And try and break them. Because I think it also affects all of these guys, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it affects all of these guys around, which is pretty huge. Let's hamstring them. Basically, they can't retreat now. Let's begin. So let's get you to come flying in there now. You're already fighting, right? Yeah, morale isn't great on this left flank. I guess our numbers really aren't proving too heavy. Your command. And you're going to come charging in there. Perfect. You guys are already preemptively engaged. 
So you can see the morale isn't great. Our numbers are starting to overwhelm them. The right flank did a great job of actually pulling back on this right flank. It'd be really nice if I could slow down the length of the battlefield. You can also kind of run through everything that's happening on the battlefield like this, seeing what you know, effects are happening. You can also take a look at the enemy uh, lords as well. So the cavalry is actually breaking. Can I retreat this cavalry? Or are they just stuck in? No, the cavalry stuck in and I'm just going to have to leave them. You can, like, remove back units and stuff. Oh, it's, no. We'll have to do that afterwards, right? So there's, like, one or more of our units are offering up good ideas to do. So you have the ability to disenhearten. But I think I'm just going to, I think I'm, honestly, are oh, you pursuing already? I'm going to pull you out of here. You've done good. You're close to breaking. I don't want to have you done for. Um, so yeah, you now switch Please off command. into there. You pursue Let's that. Our main force can continue Prepare to push up. Yourselves. You're going to retreat. Your command. You probably charge Let's into begin. that now. And you just kind of hold Let's off begin. there. The left Your flank command. is going to pursue, I think. No, the left flank is actually going to come round and leave this Your smaller command. unit to pursue them. Let's yeah, let's do that. Let's send this small unit right here to pursue. Please come You're still me. fighting there, right? Please come me. You're still fighting. Good, good, good. So we're going to pull out some of our weakened let's units. He's hamstringed me over here, slowing up my retreat. Encouraged some of his soldiers there. I'm hoping my horses can get out of there, though. That left flank is completely broken. I don't think you can do any commands mid-phase. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, it doesn't look like you can, but you can still kind of zoom around the battlefield, see what's going on. And like, I mean, it doesn't look awful as well. I feel like with games like this, where it's more about the grand strategy, you can kind of get away, you know, Ultimate Epic, no, um, Ultimate General Civil War is an amazing game. Um, and it kind of gets away with it, because like, the strategy overlooks the, the, the graphics, you know. The game looks beautiful, and that's amazing, but it doesn't need to, as long as the strategy is there. There we go. Victory is going to be ours. The majority of their forces seem to be um, running away. A law provoking has gone down, forcing these units to fight me. The battle is starting to go in my favour. And I think as this bar, like, so at the moment, the battle is going to kind of slowly drift back in their favour. And as these arrows fill up, the more of this bar shifts to one side. And you can, whenever this bar fills up, you kind of win the battle. It's raining now. I don't know how this negatively affects my units. But at least our cavalry's got out of there now. They need their time to rest. They did lose quite a few soldiers, but that's fine. Command me. Yeah, you can kind of charge back in, but I don't want to. I want to kind of just rest you, honestly. Please command me. Um, and I guess we need to try Let's and smash this forces over here. You've broken forward now. This unit's already retreated, so there's no point to pursue it. Oh, can this force already? actually come around here? You can actually move your way around there. You move in there. Please command you pursue them still. You come around Let's there. Begin. You chase them down still. There's a couple more reinforcements, but nothing we can't handle. You hear my plan? Why don't you move the cavalry there so it's in range? Yeah, they're being smashed back now, retreating. Battle, yeah, look at that, because I've got so many of these arrows. Battle is heavily going in my favor. They were, more than I expected. we're even smashing them back over here. We're suddenly getting the advantage, seems. Yeah, the enemy are starting to lose heart. This is going to be a huge hit to their morale. So you can gallop in now. Probably do you want to gallop you in? Yeah, let's gallop you. Oh, drama, what does this do? Boost up our stats. I want to kind of gallop to give us more movement speed. And I want to charge. Yeah, charge in there because they're routing, obviously. We want to pursue them. They kind of just got their big clump right here. Let's begin. But we're about to get a big amount of reinforcements coming over here. Our main force also has some abilities. Concentrate, what does this do? Improves our defense and also spotting. We'll do that. So, like, you can already see, like, this is the first battle, and there's a lot of detail involved in it, you know. And each of these characters, kind of, the more you play, I assume, the more you'll get used to them. You'll still be suing. I'm kind of scared he's just going to turn around and smack me. He does outnumber us, but hopefully, we can dominate the battlefield. Like, yeah, all of these abilities and stuff really do add a lot to the game. You can see we are cutting them down as they try and flee. More of their, their centers now breaking. Okay, so we've got, we've got a few more soldiers back here. Yeah, we'll just try and break them. Disenhearten them and charge if you can. 
I mean, it loads our defense. I don't think I want to lower my defense, but it does also boost up the stats. Okay, let's do it. So, like, sometimes it might not be a good idea to use half of these abilities. Please command me. We're going to because it does also boost up all the stats of all of these guys. So we'll just continue to fight. Um, main force. Let's push up here. You got. I know my morale isn't great, but I think we just need to keep on pushing. Try and see the battle is almost won. So he's brandished. He's bro they're broken. Perfect. So more of these soldiers we kill as well, we're better. Victory is almost claimed by us. Forces continue to push up. Yeah, we're breaking. But they're actually going to outflank me here. Come into my side. The law provoked though is good. Forcing all these guys to come and attack him. But yeah, he's also taking a big punch right there. So they've actually got quite a few units back here as well. So yeah, continue to chase them down. I want these guys dead. Oh, no, we don't want to do that anymore. I don't know. What do you think of this? Mr. Hojo, I think this is my son. Yeah, charge them, please. Hamstring, yeah, it's hamstring them. Stop them a lot, like, just prevent them from moving. That was all of their movement range. Perfect. Oh, let's end the turn again. Another unit broken. There we go. The battle's been won. Our bar has completely gone up. We killed quite a few of them there, and now it, I assume it's just yeah, a nice little victory right there for the Hojo. I'm happy with how uh, Everyone, that battle that went. Was a battle. Oh, it was indeed. Seriously. So this basically our war exhaustion is going up now, but that's a good. As in, I guess it's, it's our war enthusiasm is going up. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not sure if this just means how many men we have left or how many men we killed. I think it's how many men we have left. You can see a lot of their champions did end up getting defeated. And we're going to go ahead and smash that army. That will also now allow us to actually siege out the enemy. Time to corner the foe. So yeah, we destroyed their army after that battle. They didn't manage to get away. Uh, so we do have an option to employ some people from their clan now, which is something I really do love because, you know, these Asian games are very much always about these characters. And I, I love the way that you can just kind of, oh, this guy, um, you know, has been doing this for a certain amount of time uh, or with this faction. Let's see if I can bribe him over. I've defeated him in battle. Let's get him over. Um, and I think there's only so many people you can actually get as well i think it does cost you something or they're not willing to join you i don't want to take any of them we can also choose to execute them as well um again like i don't think i want to i think i think i'm fine i'm not like 100 percent sure you have my thanks it's probably not best to do that but then i think maybe they're more likely to join us afterwards and you got to remember as well that we are going to be, uh, you know, conquering this clan again. So maybe taking, like, letting them all loose and not killing them will allow us to help out in the later stages and once we do defeat them. Because they do only have a couple towns left. We destroy their armies. They can request reinforcements, like what we could do right now. Um, can we do it right now? Yeah, so we could request reinforcements from the Decada um, and ask for more soldiers or from certain pl places. Like, you know, like, oh, we need, you know, an extra 8,000 soldiers. That obviously cost us our provisions and strain on our economy because we'll be like buying them, but them. that's fine. Nice, his ability has improved as well due to training. That's report. great. So can we see that development? No, that's just that being built. Okay. So personal maybe? Can we see what he improved by or not? These are last month's results. So yeah, we're still losing so many provisions. I guess you really do have to prepare for provisions when it does come to I'd like war to and stuff. Thoughts. So who do we have? So loads of commerce, loads of diplomacy, kind of a mix of everything. So we don't actually have any abilities. So I guess we'll, we'll pick up the commerce because 18 is, seems like quite a lot, right? This guy, it seems like a lot as well. Hmm. I mean, what are we going to be expanding? I definitely want to take the military dude, because he also gives me a bit of everything. Let's take the agriculture as well. 15 agriculture is nice. And then maybe just a mix of everything again. But also taking the 15... Maybe just take 15 commerce as well. And with that, let us end this council. Yeah, let's do that. I think it'll be a good deal to set up. Ooh, gain more fertilization. Fertilization boost. I love the way it just slowly expands. So that costs 15, but that's really good. 
Ooh, provision income increase. I'm actually going to pick up. So, like, I really do want the extra fertility. But I think this is just more important right now. So, that should have produced us more of that. We also get a military one. Infantry recruitment speed or militia recruitment speed. Or do I save up for a precision? Yeah, I think I save up for this, actually. Ooh, better policy suggestions. Yeah, let's do that. Because if we pick them up, that would be good. Because you need our we need our advisors to tell us all about these extra stuff appearing on the map. And that just means that basically they're more likely to do it. So we picked up we should have producing more provisions now. Um, but you know, we're gonna come into winter soon enough, and that's not gonna be great. But I think once we've taken this, we can just quickly end this war. Their war exhaustion is pretty low. So we should be okay. We also have a lot of soldiers here as well. Like I'm I, it's, it gets a little bit confusing, like, where I have these guys. But what I could do if I had... No, I don't have anyone else. Yeah, you can appoint more officers, and I could appoint an officer here to take the 2,300 men. You can see as well, after a battle, the soldiers will be replenishing as well. But we'll just end the turn again. They're, be they're basically beaten. Unless they get reinforcements from someone else, we should be fine. More refugees coming in from trying to avoid the fighting. Oh, he's trying to gather. The victory for this fight. Nice, we took their castle. He wouldn't join us anyway. I'm just not going to bother executing him either. Well, you can escape this time, good sir. Uh, no, so what do we want? Do we want to move this army now? I think we do. Let's take steps. I mean, they're not going to smash me there, right? They've only got 900 men. 900 men with my 1700, I'm, I'm fine with that. So let's, let's march our forces steps. down and we'll just take we their next, next force out here. Surround so they're going to come in here, engage me down here to the south. Um, however, our victory is assured, so I'm just going to go ahead and auto-resolve this battle. We won the battle. Good, good, good. Lost a decent amount of soldiers, but basically wiped all the men they're gathering. And also, so our commanders are getting better and better. Perfect. So we capture an extra castle. That's good. So we are actually only losing 2,500 provisions now. Which I guess is okay. <laughs> I guess. It's because our armies are all on the move. It's probably much more optimal to go ahead and uh, and disband units when you're not using them, like in situations like this. Disband like half my army and just take the castles. But the overall empire is growing quite nicely, um, and I'm definitely enjoying it. So here we go, guys. I'm going to wrap up the sponsored video right here. Massive thank you to the developers for sponsoring this video. Like, as I said, like I'm actually having a lot of fun with this game, so maybe if you guys want to see another sponsored video or you want to see me kind of take another run at this game as like a proper series or even just stream on twitch do let me know in the comments down below and please 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 you drop a like on the video i'll leave a link to the game down below as well so you guys can check it out for yourself and i guess i will see you guys in the next one